Right. Smartphone photography is huge. In fact, the most popular cameras that are being used to this day are still smartphones. Look at any photography website like Flickr or 500px, you probably notice that the most popular cameras being used in uploading photos are going to be smartphones. With this huge market of smartphone photography users, there's obviously going to be a huge market for third party accessories as well. Have a look at Moment and see how popular the lenses are. For good reason, because they're quite good quality. But I'm gonna be reviewing a product from a company that I've already covered before. It's called Bitplay and they've released a new case for the iPhone 10 plus a couple of extra lenses for us to look at. So without further ado, let's get started. If you've seen my videos before then you would have seen a couple of my previous videos covering accessories from Bitplay. They released cases for all the different versions of iPhone starting from around the iPhone 6. They've been producing third-party lenses for a number of years, but they've only really started upping their game in terms of design and optics in the last couple. Last year, I reviewed their Snap 7 case in addition to their HD tele lens. Both of them were of a decent quality, but they all had a number of drawbacks which didn't really make them a viable option. This year, is it any different? Well, let's talk about it. So what's new? There's an updated case design. So the previous version was actually quite bulky and had a really huge hand grip. I mean, it improved ergonomics quite significantly but it also increased the size quite significantly as well. This time around with the iPhone 10, in some cases it does sacrifice on the ergonomic side of things too. To start off with, it's a much slimmer, modern looking case. It's got nice lines and it comes in a bunch of different modern colors as well. This is a khaki color, but it also comes in white, black and blue, and it's also got interchangeable hand grips as well. You can mix and match the colors. There's also a little hook down here for a wrist strap if you like that, and that's probably a prerequisite for most camera cases. Now with a new case comes a couple of compromises when it comes to ergonomics, and the first one is in its hand grip. So the previous version was much bigger and made holding the iPhone kind of like holding a mirrorless camera. This was also helped by the fact that the previous case had a thumb grip. This one doesn't really. All it's got is a few little notches which improve the grippiness when you're holding it like this, but it's certainly not the same as the previous version, which is a bit of a shame. One other compromise that they also made was that there's no more tripod mount. There used to be one on that fat hand grip from the previous version, but obviously now that everything's nice and slim, there's no room for that either. You get some, you lose some. Now for the more important features, those have been retained. Primarily being the dedicated shutter button. So I really like the previous version because of its nifty little feature where it leverages the use of the down volume button in order to simulate camera shutter. So when you click on it, it actually presses the volume down button instead. So what that basically means is that you can hold and use it as if you would any other camera. The other advantage is that it retains the same screw mount for its third party lenses as in all the other previous cases. So if you are someone that used all of Bitplay's accessories in the past, you own a few of their lenses, then chances are it's gonna work on this case as well. So that's another plus. But of course, Bitplay didn't only just release a new case. With the release of this case, they also released a couple of new lenses as well. So last year, I reviewed one of their HD wide angle lenses. That already has been updated and they've also added a new HD telephoto lens into the mix as well. And I've been using those for the last couple of months. Both of them are constructed of a premium metal casing housing a number of different glass elements which already oozes quality. When you hold them in their hand they're nice and hefty, they've got a nice weight to them and they're definitely solid. You'll probably hurt someone if you threw it at them but thanks to its construction it's also got a much bigger footprint as well and once fully mounted it's not gonna fit in your pocket. I mean you can try but it probably won't but thankfully it is easily mounted thanks to its screw mount. It's not quite as easy or quick as the moment lenses, but hey, it's easy enough. And thanks to its mount design, it's really secure, so there's no fear of it falling off or slipping off when you're taking photos. You also notice that it has a really large rear element as well, so when it's attached to the back of your phone, there's a less risk of getting any vignetting. So let's talk about the lenses individually. With the wide angle lens, it widens the field of view by approximately 60%, and with that, you still retain excellent sharpness, clarity with a much more interesting field of view. Now the only time you see a little bit of softness, that's right at the edges of the picture. And that's only if you're gonna be pixel peeping. On the whole, photos with the wide angle lens looks excellent. There is a tiny bit of distortion, which is probably expected given the widened field of view. Despite that, 
It's not overly fisheye-like and still very rectilinear. In addition to this, it fits more in the scene and when you're shooting video, I believe it improves the cinematic feel of the video and that's especially when you shoot it in higher frame rates such as 60, 120 or even 240, something that the iPhone 10 is capable of. In fact, the slightly cropped field of view when shooting video crops away the softer edges so all you get is a nice sharp image right in the middle. All the photos that I took with it came out beautiful and really, I didn't have any real complaints over it. And in addition to that, the new design of this lens also allows for a polarizing filter to be put in. Now that's an optional extra from BitPlay itself and costs around $45 or so to get, but it's something else to think about if you're into that sort of thing. Now let's talk about the telephoto lens. Now it gives the standard angle an extra two times optical zoom. So for those with just an iPhone 8 or an iPhone 7, it'll give you that telephoto reach that the Plus models in the iPhone 10 will give. Now I wish I could echo the same sentiments as the wide angle when it comes to the quality of the images, but I can't. Across the board, the lens was very soft. Initially, I thought the lens itself, when attached to the phone, was messing around with its autofocusing. When I launched a third-party app such as ProCam, which allows you to manually focus, I could never reach a point where I could find crisp focus, and that was even when I had peaking activated in the app. Now, I'm not saying that all the photos were just completely blurry and unusable, but if you were pixel peeping and zooming in, you could tell that all the photos were just not sharp enough, as if every single photo was missing couple of notches of focus. From a distance, it does look like it does the job. So if you're someone that will primarily use it for posting on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, or whatever, it's going to do the job just fine. However, for, for more dedicated use, probably better just to use the stock telephoto lens. Now for some of the positives I guess, when you use it with the standard lens, you can achieve a nice natural bokeh that you don't usually get with the stock telephoto or even with the portrait mode. And that's primarily because it leverages the f1.8 aperture of the standard lens. And so you can actually get a fairly nice portrait looking photo even when you compare it to the dedicated portrait mode, so long as you can nail the focus. And then finally, using the third party app like ProCam where you can actually control when it uses the secondary camera, you can actually connect it onto the stock telephoto lens to extend its reach. So in the end, what you end up with is almost peeping tom levels of magnification. It gives you about four times optical zoom. And if you are a peeping tom, you didn't hear it from me because that ain't right and stop doing it. But overall, getting a closer look at things is probably all it's good at if you do mount it onto the telephoto lens. Photos are extraordinarily soft and you only are gonna be using it again for things like Snapchat, Instagram, and maybe a bit of casual social media posting. But that's basically Basically the telephoto lens in a nutshell. Overall, as a package, it's obviously not for everyone. The case on its own is quite nice, but it still costs around 44 US dollars or around 57 or 58 Australian dollars. Combine the case with a lens as a package, then you're gonna be looking at paying at around 137 US dollars. And if you just want a lens, then that'll cost you 100 US dollars. That's a lot of dough for the average user. However, if you're someone that likes to take their smartphone photography quite seriously, and you want a package that minimizes the bulk without compromising kind of on quality, then you'll be happy with this package so long as it's with the HD wide angle lens. Forget about the telephoto lens because that's not worth your money. Otherwise, for the average user, the stock cameras are plenty good enough and versatile enough, so you could probably give the lenses a skip. If you like bulky cases, then this isn't a bad option. Anyway, what do you think? Do you think third-party camera accessories are a bit of a waste of time? Let me know why or why not in the comment section below. As always, links to all of these products are gonna be in the description below. And if you enjoyed what you saw, give us a like. And if you haven't already, do consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Say good day, mum, for me. Cheers.